Hello again. Excellent. I'm hoping that everybody can see the screen. Can they, is Mr. Chairman, first of all, you can hear me and we can see it. Okay. Okay. I've got this thing. Thank you. Uh, it won't take us too long to get through this paper. I think there are 37 slides, but, but some may require a little bit more time and others won't. But uh, this is just starting with the review. No need to take, take any time. Demographics, low state support, pricing competition, disruptive technology. Those faces were already there. Uh, this is just graphically looking at the, you know, that's the 12th grade enrollment in public schools through 17, 18. We haven't updated it for uh, 18, 19. Uh, uh, so, um, but you, you get the general trend and it's not getting any better. Uh, low, bottom left state support, enrollment, uh, and the amount of discounting going on across our, our challenges. So again, that's, that's what we are facing. Um, these are our uh, projected financial results for this fiscal year pre-COVID-19. And uh, also going back uh, four more fiscal years. So uh, on, you know, uh, balance sheets and, and P&Ls and, uh, you know, like red is not a good number. Uh, you can see uh, in, in, in four out of these five years, we will have been operating in a deficit. At the second end of the second quarter, uh, we were uh, projected to finish the fiscal year with a $4.2 million deficit. Now, you know, I know our presidents were working extremely hard to minimize that number 4.2 million and would have, uh, but you know, uh, when, when things started going really haywire in March, uh, you know, we were in emergency mode everywhere uh, and you know, really ha have not gotten a third quarter, don't know really how we're gonna end up the fiscal year. So uh, you know, it's just important to notice that, look, this didn't happen right away. It's not all COVID-19. We've been, we've been precarious for quite some time. And, it, and this is a system level. It varies by institution. I, I want to say that again within our system, you know, we have a very diverse set of institutions. You know, we have a, a community college of Vermont. It is it is where most Vermonters touch their post secondary education or get their post secondary education, uh, and they they are uh, you know in a, in a different. They're not residential, so their financial situation is 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 good. Uh, the residential institutions have been uh, challenging. Some years they do better than other years. Uh, and overall, you can see where we are in, on the bottom for net revenues as a system. Well, here we are, go to the COVID-19 expenses. And uh, you know, the, the first big one that is, a, is, is an expense that we're gonna have to take care of in this fiscal year, which we were not anticipating on top of the 4.2, or if you could get it down to three, whatever you thought you could get it down to, it's not clear yet, but it would have been less because I know how hard our presidents were working. Uh, the, the room and board refunds are 5.6. And then in some of the next sheets, you'll see a, a few question marks as to, you know, we're, we're still working to identify what the projected loss of revenue will be for camps and conferences in uh, 2020, like this fiscal year ending June 30th. Uh, but this, you know the, the estimate here is 250,300 uh, tuition, summer tuition, uh, investment income, uh, federally mandated COVID-19 leave costs, which uh, it, you know we want to be uh, uh, well, we want to comply with federal law and we want to be good to our employees. But there's a cost there, and that could be more. So you know if you were to sort of add that, you know probably four million to the uh, 5.6, it's, 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 it's a larger number than just the, the room and board, still a bit of a moving target. So what we said here uh, is, you know, an estimate for what the, the, the uh, Q2 results will be. And, uh, you know, if I could ask Mr. Chairman, if, if our CFO, Steve Wozlowski or any of the deans of administration ever wanna just pipe in on something I'm going through when I go through these numbers pages, uh, feel free to to uh, to uh, fill in any blanks. After all, you're the ones that actually have, uh, have slaved over this in a remote environment for for uh, the last number of weeks. And, and really appreciate your help. But you start with the the net revenues there that we were projecting. Add the room and board. Uh, these are the question marks are like what I showed you the estimates on the other page, which are in the ballpark of four million. Um, and 
you, you, you then, uh, so you have your 4.2, your additional core costs, your other four, we are going to get some money back from, from the, the, the uh, or not money back, but under the big, uh, I guess it was the, the third uh, federal bill, um, there was money for higher education. Uh, it, uh, it, it goes out to every college and university in the country, uh, every college and university of any kind, uh, no matter how uh, affluent they are. Uh, and, and what kind of programs they, they, if they were eligible for federal financial aid, whether they're a college or pharmacy or uh, Harvard University, they're eligible based on enrollment and Pell eligible students. So the larger the institution, uh, you know, the more money you get from the, the federal government. So it's $14 billion uh, for the Vermont State College system it's, as a whole, it's just over $6 million. Uh, $3 million of that needs to go directly uh, to student grants, students in need as a result of uh, COVID-19, and there are many, uh, and our colleges are all developing plans to take their portion of that and use it to support their students. What it's not available for is like the 5.6 or the other revenue loss or, or our existing uh, uh, projected deficit at the end of the second quarter. So, you know, really what we're showing in this sheet is a, is a projected loss of 6.7. I can tell you right now that there are definitely other revenue losses that are gonna to have to be added in there. So the estimate we've been uh, sharing with people is seven to 10. And I would imagine it'll be on, on the higher end of that. Uh, just quickly, you know, the next big piece is, okay, that's what's happening in this fiscal year. What are you expecting to happen next year? And boy, what a crapshoot that is. I mean, you know, we, we, we are, uh, you know, in the same boat everybody else is. But first of all, you know, you want to you know, think about where people are. 30% of all universities uh, were running operating deficits, deficits in 2019. Uh, we fit into that category. 16% uh, of public universities have less than 90 days of cash on hand. We fit into that category. Uh, when you talk about enrollment, you know, what, what are students going to do? In a recent survey in, in, in a, 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 a well-known higher education publication, 29% of the students said they strongly or somewhat agreed that they've considered deferring attending college until the whole event passes. Not sure what's gonna happen in the fall, not sure if there's a reoccurrence, not sure if their family's gonna be working again. Uh, and uh, you know, it's a great deal of uncertainty. And what's happening because of that is colleges and universities around the country are admitting uh, many more students. So one example is Vanderbilt. I mean, you know, I'm, 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 I'm positive that places like in this state, well, other states in this state that are, whether it's a Middlebury or, or a University of Vermont will be admitting more students in prep, pre preparation for a significant decline in yield, which is basically meaning, you know, fewer of the people they, they admit uh, will actually show up even if they do put down the deposit. So it's a very uncertain time uh, and international students is, is another issue altogether. But you know, when you when you look f forward, uh, you know we are projecting at our residential institutions a 15% decline in enrollment over, over what it otherwise would be for the next year, and that's that's like that's big money. So uh, you know it's it's a little bit uncertain, but to 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 project that there's going to be no enrollment impact without action is uh, is I, I I would say not prudent. So why do we need to transform? Why do we need to do it now? Because we face unprecedented financial challenges and must make hard decisions. Uh, you know, the system, you know, has looked at alternatives. We, we've looked at, okay, maybe we should have, you know, uh, just a community college in Vermont and no residential. Well, that, that, that uh, might've worked financially, uh, but it was uh, not something that we, we could we could we could uh, support. Uh, we feel that you know uh, community college is our, our primary access point and and something that has to be protected at all costs. Uh, but we believe that the programs that are offered at Vermont Technical College are also important, uh, and that our Vermont students, our everyday Vermonters, deserve access to a quality uh, residential career-based liberal arts campus. So, you know, the, the community college option on its own did not seem realistic. Uh, you know, uh, keeping all of our colleges, that's what number one is, heads towards 
insolvency fast. Uh, we looked at, can you close one campus, not two campuses? Uh, the numbers didn't work out there. Uh, and, you know, uh, would have, would have, would have uh, not allowed, you know, th that one college to survive or another college that's part of the same, uh, uh, the same institution. So uh, that didn't work. Uh, and, you know, the model that we settled on, which is, you know what it is, I've already stated it, uh, was able to have us show that in, in, in a couple of years, we can be back uh, operating on a, on, in the black. So, you know, when it came down to it, we only had two realistic choices, uh, continue as we are towards insolvency or transform the system to meet the future. And that's what we've chosen, or I've chosen to recommend to the Board of Trustees. Uh, and under the status quo, when we'll look at the numbers in a minute, but, you know, even with that, uh, we're talking about significant budget reductions. You know, we've already had a, hundreds of fewer employees working for the Vermont State College of the System compared to five or six years ago. Uh, and it would require another major reductions, but you know, making it difficult to be able to provide the quality academic and support systems that you should be providing for students uh, and you know, could risk accreditation standards as well. Uh, so, you know, uh, but you know, if, if we were status quo, we'd have to do that. And also, of course, reduction in supplies and services. Uh, you know, the other scenario that we're recommending, consolidating and view onto the Castleton campus, transferring select programs, uh, some faculty trying to encourage as many uh, students at NVU to uh, join the Castleton uh, Institution, Castleton University, uh, and uh, then uh, have Community College of Vermont uh, and Castleton find ways that over time, it wouldn't happen in the first six months, but over the first several years, how can they expand instruction in, the nor in Northern Vermont, including uh, the Northeast Kingdom and other rural parts of the state by using the CCV locations or shared sites with Vermont Tech. And Vermont Tech is already providing programming, uh, nursing programming in, in the Northern part of the state uh, that you know, we, we are not going to abandon uh, the northern part of the state, but look for ways to move to a new model uh, and, and a, a less bricks and mortar approach. Um, we are going to, my recommendation is to focus Vermont Tech on high demand, high growth programs in Williston and around Williston and distributed. And that'll take a while to develop as, as well. But the proposal closes the Randolph Center campus uh, over this summer and has the programs continuing up in Williston. I know that people could say, well, why are you going to Chittenden County? Well, first of all, Rutland is not Chittenden County or Castle is not Chittenden County. Uh, and uh, and it's had a, 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 it's a loss of, as I already mentioned, three institutions of higher learning there in the last year. So there's a real need in that part of the state. Uh, and, um, you know, that's where the Vermont Technical College commuter campus with a very limited a residential capacity is. Uh, and there, if, if there are uh, additional rooms that are necessary for uh, low resident students or other students, uh, there are plenty of rooms at some of the other institutions of higher learning that are also having uh, the same general enrollment issues that uh, all small rural dependent, uh, tuition dependent colleges are. So, you know, we would, we, we, we would, uh, rec I would recommend that and then reorienting and rescaling the chancellor's office. So roughly, you know, would, our numbers people work with a uh, very sophisticated uh, financial model. It's very granular, 17 tabs. You put into various assumptions and uh, see, see what, what comes out. Uh, and the green line is the status quo. And what you can see is, it takes you back to you know, where we were uh, and, and you get to the, uh, again, to the, the 6.7. And then, you know, next year it's, 12.6 in the red, and every year you're in the red. And what we're proposing on the, our transformation model is actually a little bit more in the first year because you have closing costs and carrying the cost of a campus, uh, payouts, uh, and so forth. So it does cost you more, but by the second year, you're starting to get better. And by the third year, those closing costs are over. Uh, we are hoping to have uh, a, a 
you know, started to be able to dispose of some of our campuses or find low, 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 low ways to, to maintain them. Uh, and, and then, you know, we're basically, you know, operating uh, on in the, at least level uh, for the future. So, you know, it's, it's, uh, you know, it's, 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 it is uh, not an easy to, to accomplish, but compared to what we do, even if we do all the budget reductions with the same campus configuration, a long shot better. So, uh, you know, again, you know, why, what do I, why I have to do this? Near future, uh, you know, we will be running out of cash and I'll show you that in a minute. Uh, the operating <laughs> deficit driven by continuation of historical enrollment and retention challenges, immediate near-term impact of COVID-19 and steady rise in expenses for retiree med medical benefits and the like. Uh, so I already mentioned the fact that we're linked financially be a single organization. And what we don't want to do is lose everything. What we want to do is keep as much as we can and give us time to adapt and expand into less intensive uh, uh, residential models. So that's you know what we're looking at at status quo. I've shown you that. Uh, you know, and that that just to get to there uh, assumes, you know, A, no reduction in the state appropriation. So you know, we really got to work on the state to say, look, you know, okay, we, we don't, we're, we're not getting as much as other places, uh, but we need to not go down any. And that's not going to be an easy sell in the, in the existing climate where they're, you know, basically losing lots of revenue and have fires to put out any everywhere. Uh, you know, a personnel reduction of another 80 to 90 employees, uh, you know, and, and what we're projecting on enrollment and and retention and it gets us back to, to that. So even with all those things, that's an unsustainable, we, 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 won't, we will not survive. Uh, and, uh, you know, um, this is the status quo budget projection. It's the same thing. You see the same numbers down here on the bottom, but just going out, you know, if you look at it, the cumulative deficit is like up to $85 million under the status quo projection, even with those reductions. So why do we need to transform right here and now? Well. This is our, our cash balance and our, our, our main bank account. And, uh, you know, it's for the last uh, four fiscal years, including the projected for FY20 in red, the last part of it here, uh, you know, the yellow is up to date and then what's projected down. And what you can see here, uh, trustees and, and other viewers, is that around in June, July, and August, before the tuition revenue starts coming back in, yeah, you know, we we have hit in many years, like in FY18, down to like three million dollars in our, our our account, and you know you're down to five million on a, on a, on almost every year, including this year. Um, our payroll every two weeks is about four million, and then we've got accounts payable and others uh, other expenses that are paid out every month of about two million. So every two weeks we go through six million dollars. Uh, and without you know revenue coming in, uh, that's 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 hurting. And here we are, you know, adding in uh, our 5.6 and those other costs I mentioned for result of COVID-19. And you can see this that, that we built in, you know, that we're going to get some the three million back from the feds. Uh, or not back, but they we're going to get three million dollars of assistance from the federal government, the CARES money. But we will be, uh, you know, operating and hitting our reserves. Uh, by the middle of June. That is a new place we've never been before. And it's a direct result of COVID-19. Uh, you know, looking at our, our system reserves under the status quo model, uh, you know, basically uh, readily available reserves, everything else that we shouldn't be touching, that's, you know, what we have. I mean, you really, some of these require action and they're, they're hitting, uh, you know, the kind of accounts that are, are not what you'd want to do. So, you know, even just to close out FY20, uh, we're down to, you know, about 2 million in our red, red, readily available reserves. Uh, and, you know, by, by 21, those are gone. And we've gone through uh, 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 funds like that are reserved for projects and student clubs and things like that, uh, you know, almost entirely in, in FY21. So, uh, you know, uh, that's that's not something that uh, you know 
and we we really can't do that. I mean, we we are we are heading for a situation where uh, we then have no nothing, and if anything goes wrong, you know, starting in FY22, you, you basically have gone through everything, uh, and you know, you you you'd have to get into your endowments and things like that. But that's that's you, you really. You know that you have to go to court for, and, and people are going to want their. They, they gave it for uh, student scholarships and, and specific programs that are not easy to touch, and we wouldn't want to do that. So uh, I've given you the recommendation there. Uh, we do want to make sure that we know that we are going to have to expand uh, Castleton and CCV and Vermont Tech to the extent we can to offer. Uh, programs in the in the Northeast Kingdom, and I, I maintain that you know other institutions of higher learning, such as the University of Vermont, uh, and others that are independent ones, uh, should rise to the occasion and help us to provide, on a residential or a low residency basis, uh, additional programming in the in the rural parts of the state, particularly the Northeast. Where we talked about refocusing Vermont Technical College uh, up to uh, the Wilson campus. And uh, you know that's 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 uh, part of our proposal, and uh, you know, maintaining CCV's key role in a statewide network. Uh, we're going to restructure the chancellor's office beginning of the next fiscal year. Okay, we got that. Uh, you know, what's the financial impact? Well, you know, the uh, the the status quo is like a 6.7 million. I'm telling you, it's going to be more than that, uh, and the recommendation is going to be more than that too. So it actually costs a little bit more due to the closing costs to get us started, but uh, over time, you know, we really go from a, a over a, over a, a period of time, like instead of a, a status quo cumulative deficit of 85 million over five years, or uh, if you want to look at it just on an annual basis, 15, 16, 17 million a year, which is totally not realistic, won't happen, you won't be here, uh, or we sort of, you know, got to make the difficult decisions and and, and keep our our, our cumulative deficit significantly lower. Uh, Five-year budget proje projection. Um, let's see here. Uh, well, you can see we're we're, we're going to start moving into the into the black in FY22. Steve and, and and other BAC. If I if I need some help here, I want you to, to pitch in. Uh, we'll but, do, Jeff. You, know, you you you've got that as your regular operating. Then you add in. The additional costs of uh, you know uh, revenues to expenses that are, are related to uh, COVID kinds of uh, situations, and you get down to what we think is more realistic, which is we still we start going in the black in uh, FY22, and then we're just basically at a sustainable barely level after that. Uh, it gives us time to uh, adapt more and look for additional ways to generate revenue. On a smaller scale, but considerably less losses. Uh, anything I also want to point out on this page, Steve, or BAC? No, Jeb. I'd say you've you've covered the the you know the main points. Okay. Uh, just a little uh, comparison. Uh, you know, I've already showed you this. You see it. The difference between what the the financial impact is of the status quo versus the recommendation, and what the the annual variance is. And what the what the cumulative variance is. Um, you know, we will work to support NVU students transferring to Castleton. Uh, the recommendation does not rely on you know wholesale transfer. Uh, I think it was like out of out of both colleges, maybe in the in the in the, in the realm of uh, uh, four hundred students. I don't know whether uh, you know Sharon or or Steve, anybody has a re recollection on that. But that was my <laughs> recollection. Approximately uh, 400 undergraduate students. Yeah. Okay. Uh, and then uh, a state level appropriation, uh, you know, a portion of it, because, you know, you were going to need to use, that's one of the reasons why it's key that we don't see our, our state appropriation reduced, because uh, we do have retirement obligations that are in the realm of 6 million growing to 10 million as more people are, 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 are in retirement and drawing their, their retiree benefits. Uh, debt services. It's currently in the realm of eight to ten million dollars uh, across the system, and the pro rata share uh, of the closed institutions uh, or, or campuses will be uh, ongoing. 
uh, and we built in maintenance of the, the campus for one year. And during that year, we're going to work hard with the state to see what they can do to help, uh, whether they could take on those campuses. They've got a lot more bandwidth and, and connections to do that. Uh, and after all, we are uh, a state entity uh, a, a created by the state, but we felt we needed to build in uh, the campus closure costs for a year. So we did do that. Um, this is, you know, under the transformation model of the system reserves. And, you know, the bottom line here is that, uh, you know, we, we do get into some of the, the, the available plant and other, but uh, we, we re refrain from the board of trustees required action. And we never go into the, to the red uh, in terms of being totally ins uh, insolvent. Uh, anything I missed there, team? No, Jeb, it's a, it's a great point. Um, but we should also uh, point out that these are just snapshots at the end of the fiscal year. We're still going to need external financing to get us over the low points of those, you know, in the colored M chart yes. uh, to get us through the, the low points in our cash. But this is a much better position overall by comparison. Okay, Mr. Chairman, uh, you know, so why are we doing this? We're doing this because it's what we need to do to sustain our mission as well as we can. And over time to, to, to provide the, the kind of educational and training opportunities that Vermonters need, we will continue to adapt. We know that, you know, our, our students are overwhelmingly Vermonters. They stay in state when they graduate. Uh, they're, they're first generation and low income and fairly significant numbers, uh, and they deserve access across the state, affordable in-demand degrees and credentials, and we believe a, a residential institution offering liberal arts and career-based programs. And when I look at it on a statewide basis, and I you know, look at the entire picture in Vermont, of, again, 620,000 people with a shrinking traditional college-going population, I say, okay, what is realistic for the state of Vermont to support? Uh, and, you know, compared to, let's say, in New Hampshire, uh, where they have a state university uh, flagship like the University of Vermont and the University of New Hampshire, for roughly twice the population, they have two residential campuses. In Vermont, we have, we have the reverse half the, 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 the population and four residential campuses. I just think that that's not affordable for us and not affordable for the state of Vermont. And actually, you know, what we would have is if, if, if we adopted the recommendation of the chancellor is a state university that needs to pick up more Vermonters, a robust community college system with statewide access, increasingly integrating uh, with Vermont Technical College programs uh, and possibly becoming uh, a community technical college or technical community college or, or, or some kind of entity that uh, can uh, you know, operate on a statewide basis and, and deliver programs using technical centers and others, uh, other locations, employer pro programs, which are increasingly happening right now uh, at hospitals or at, at places of business, uh, global foundries or what have you. Uh, and uh, also you know, a residential option. So if Vermont would have a state university, robust community college uh, can maintain strong uh, technical programs that are important for Vermonters uh, to, to generate income for themselves in the state uh, and a residential institution offering uh, liberal arts and career programs. I think that would be, that would be a, a pretty good setup for the state of Vermont. And you know, we would be playing a very important part in that process. So I do have to mention some of the critical assumptions here uh, that are important to make this work. And I'll start with the one that Steve just mentioned. Even this requires that we secure external financing or a line of credit or loan of some kind, because you know we're going to be, uh, you know, our cash basis is going to be running out and going into your reserves like that is not a good thing, and will put us into a situation where if we don't get, get additional financing uh, by late summer, early fall, you know, we'll be uh, in a very, very uh, bad way, uh, and it, it'll have effects on accreditation and all, all kinds of things like that. So, 
you know, we do need external financing. We have talked to yesterday. I had the opportunity to speak with Senator Sanders, spoke with the governor. Uh, you know, we've spoken with legislative leaders, uh, and you know, we've made our case that you can't you can't cut our appropriation, and you can't uh, you know we, we need we need external financing. There is 1.25 billion of uh, federal money coming under the CARES Act, and you know, we want to make a strong case that uh, even though it needs to be related to COVID-19 kinds of events that, you know, look, the enrollment decline we're talking about is related to the, out, the after effects of COVID-19. The refunds, those things are related to COVID-19. So, you know, we are going to keep working as hard as we can for external financing or a line of credit of some kind from a lender. Um, you know, and, I, and the third bullet there is maintaining the state appropriation. Uh, that's just critically important. You know, we are we are uh, assuming that the COVID-19 restrictions will be lifted for fall 20 and residential campuses is going to open either ours or other private ones in the, in, the, in the state or the University of Vermont or what have you. Uh, if that were not the case, uh, it would be much easier to make contingency plans for how to address that with one residential institution as opposed to three or four residential institutions. But you need to know that you know, if, if by some chance residential colleges and universities in Vermont, New England, and the country can't open, it's a game changer and, 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 and more for institutions all over the country. So it's just one of those things that we're, we're living with in this, these times that are, you know, unprecedented. Uh, and, you know, I, I maintain are going to change higher education, you know, even if we can't open the fall for a long time to come, change our state for a long time to come. You're the governor today. I didn't listen to it. I didn't have time to listen to it. But in his press conference, pointed out that I think he's referred to us as the tip of the iceberg. We're going to see, you know, many more unfortunate, uh, uh, you know, closures and changes coming our way in the coming weeks. But we're not alone. But uh, you know, we are also trying to get out in front and take action soon enough to make sure that we can survive. Uh, we need our faculty to be involved in uh, in, in shared governance and in the new model and transition. That will be very important. Uh, you know, we believe that management can make this decision, but, you know, how it affects uh, the institutions uh, and the academics is, is something that we need to work uh, and, and how we handle the, you know, things like uh, uh, payouts and so forth. We need to we need to work with the faculty on that. Uh, so uh, we will we will be doing that. It's important that I, 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 I gave you those those caveats so that we, we know what we're, you know, what we are. are are assuming here. So, you know, I want to sort of finish on a, a more positive note, if I could, and, you know, what we can, what we can do if we don't delay. And I know we're not taking action today, Mr. Chairman, but, you know, I mentioned earlier that, look, I mean, we're, we're, we don't have a lot of time and, you know, our, 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 our contracts, uh, and, you know, require us to give, uh, you know, uh, depending on the group, at least 45 working days or, or uh, 40, 40 calendar days or working days, depending on the group. And, and, and sometimes, you know, a lot of, a lot of payouts that go along with that. So, uh, you know, once we decide what we're doing, uh, you know, we have a, 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 what, what some people would call a long tail on this. So, uh, you know, A, you know, because of our, our financial situation, we, we can't delay. Um, we can delay a week, but in action, in my, opinion uh, would be would be a, a devastating outcome uh, and you know it's also a big move and our students need to know so they can plan and we can help them in their plans um, you know we're, we want to try to maintain our high touch relationship based programs and can uh, I don't know that we I, I don't believe we can do it with three campuses in the uh, career liberal arts area but uh, we can have a very high quality program that provides access for Vermonters. Uh, we are gonna work on virtual and distributed delivery and pr to prioritize the programs with a strong return on investment to support Vermont's future economy. Uh, so Mr. Chairman, I, I thank you for your uh, forbearance. Um, wanted to run through what we're, what we're talking about, what we're proposing. Uh, and I, I, I think we're gonna have public comment later as, as I understand it, is that right? Or what is your this plan? Is public, in my um, presentation. This will so, be public board discussion, pu public board comment. Okay. 